the midnight ride of Thomas the Tank Engine. Thomas is taking four truckloads of toys to the children's hospital in the next town. He is making a midnight run, so the toys will be there by tomorrow morning. Light your headlamps, Thomas. Off you go into the night. Peep, peep! There goes Thomas along the track. Ping, ping, crash! Oh dear! Some falling rocks have broken Thomas's headlamps. What will Thomas do without any lights? He can't run in the dark, and the children in the hospital will be disappointed if they don't get those toys. But look, a farmer is lending Thomas the lamp from his barn. That's better, isn't it? Go slowly, Thomas. That small lamp gives only a small light. Luckily, some more friends have arrived to help. That's even better. And the nice man at the village shop has offered to lend Thomas his Christmas lights. There you go, Thomas. Don't you look cheery? There's the hospital in the distance, but the tunnel lies ahead, and the tunnel is awfully dark. Look, Thomas has a special escort. Hooray for Thomas! He made it to the children's hospital. Thomas the tank engine, you've lit up the night. The end. Thomas's night before Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the yard, the engines were restless and sleeping was hard. Their stockings still empty from the glimpses they stole, would soon they all hoped be brimming with coal. Percy was dreaming; his smile was bright, of a shiny new headlamp to guide him at night. Even Sir Topham had stayed in the shed, with thoughts of Christmas a well in his head. Then out in the yard there arose such a clatter. Soon all were awake to see what was the matter. Out rolled the engines on the rails in the floor, as Sir Topham himself threw open the door. The moon shining bright on the new fallen snow made night seem like day to the engines below. And what to nine pairs of eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh? An eight tiny reindeer, and the little old driver, who was surely Saint Nick, he didn't look well. In fact, he looked sick. His reindeer were gliding, but seemed to be slow, and the driver mumbled the names that we know: Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer, now Vixen. This old elf has the flu. Oh my, I need fixin'. To the top of the shed, to the top of the wall. We've got to land quickly! Oh darn! Dash it all! So down to the yard, the eight of them dropped, and the sleigh and the driver and reindeer all dropped. Saint Nick's cheeks were red, but something seemed funny. His eyes didn't sparkle. His nose it was runny. Sir Topham, he said, a sad look on his face. I cannot go on. You must take my place. Sir Hat shook his head. I can't, for I fear. Well, I know about trains. I know nothing about deer. Trains are perfect," said Nick. "I'm sure they'll do fine. Bust your buffers, my friends, and get in a line. And faster than diesels, the engines they came. Santa whistled a new list and called by name. Now Thomas, now Percy, now Gordon, James too, Edward and Henry, Bill, Ben, I need you. These toys must be taken to each girl and boy. I know you can do it. Deliver great joy. Nick turned to Sir Topham and said, "One thing more. Your dress coat won't do. It's really a bore." He pulled out a red one, and to no one's surprise. That coat it turned out to be just the right size, and now you would bet that Saint Nick had a twin, except for the beard on one rounded chin, and while Nick wore a cap trimmed with fur on his head, Sir Topham Hat's top hat had holly instead. But night was still passing as children all slept, so giving a nod, up Sir Topham Hat leapt, as the engines gained speed, seeming almost to fly. From his seat in the sleigh, Sir Hat gave a loud cry. 
My friends, we are needed. I'm feeling quite fine. We'll be really useful. And yes, right on time. So all across Sodor, they raced on their way. Eight gleaming engines pulling one gift-filled sleigh. And we heard on the wind as they puffed out of sight. Merry Christmas to all. And to all a good night. The Missing Christmas Tree Every Christmas Eve on the island of Sodor, there was a big party. The children came to decorate the giant tree in Tidmouth Town Square. But where was this year's tree? Thomas the Tank Engine had been busy all day. His friend Percy had been sent to fetch the tree. Thomas worked fast so he could finish in time for the party. Thomas, have you seen Percy? The Fat Controller asked. He should have been back by now. Maybe he's stuck in the snow, sir, Thomas said. Percy had a plough, said James, cuffing into the square. He must be in trouble. You engines must go find him, the Fat Controller said. I'll send Harold too. But what about the tree? Thomas asked. We can't disappoint the children. Then an idea flew into his funnel. Sir... Let the children decorate me in the meantime, Thomas said. So while Harold and the engine searched for Percy, the Fat Controller invited the children of Sodor to decorate Thomas. He looked very Christmas-like in garlands of evergreen and holly. As the Fat Controller added the final touch, Percy chugged in with the tree, right on time. The tree was so big that it had wedged the truck in a tunnel, Gordon had to pull Percy out. In no time, the children had the tree decorated for Christmas. The lights blinked to oohs and ahs from all. You look a little like a Christmas tree yourself, Percy said to Thomas. He does indeed, said the Fat Controller. There are many ways to be a really useful engine. Merry Christmas to everyone, Thomas peeped. Thomas's Christmas Delivery Puff, puff, peep, peep. Snowflakes were just starting to fall as Thomas climbed the steep hill. It was Christmas Eve and Thomas wanted to be back in his shed with his friends. The engine stockings were going to be hung soon and Thomas didn't want to miss that. But Thomas was a really useful engine and he had three very important deliveries to make and they could not wait. First was a truck full of food to deliver to the community hall. All of the island of Sodor had been invited to come for a big celebration tomorrow and there had to be enough food for everyone. When he arrived, there were many people around to help unload. Everyone was in a jolly mood and the work went quickly. Suddenly, there was a shout. Mrs Kindly had slipped on the snowy walk and dropped a bowl of cranberry sauce. She was not hurt. In fact, she looked very funny covered in sticky red goo from head to toe. She laughed along with everyone else. When she was back on her feet, she walked over to Thomas and gave him a sticky pat. Merry Christmas, Thomas, she said, and she went inside to clean up. We're done, cried a workman. Off you go, Thomas. You have a lot to do yet. Merry Christmas! Peep peep! whistled Thomas and off he went into the gently falling snow. His next stop was to the big school on the hill. Some of the children were unable to go home for the holidays and Thomas had many parcels to deliver so that they wouldn't feel lonely. The snow was coming down a little harder but he still had plenty of time to get back to the engine shed and go to sleep before Father Christmas came. When Thomas pulled up near the entrance to the school, some of the teachers came out and helped to organise the unloading of the packages. The children were having a snowball fight. Splat! A red-haired boy in a green coat threw a large snowball that hit Thomas right in the side of his boiler. Peep! Thomas laughed. Everyone was helping to unload Thomas now, and he waited until the red-haired boy was standing right beside him. 
Thomas let out a blast of steam. Whoosh! The steam loosened the snow on Thomas's roof, which slid off and landed right on the red-haired boy's head. You got me, Thomas! laughed the boy. Soon he was off again. This delivery was the most important of all. Thomas had presents to bring to the children's hospital in Vickers Town. All of the children were counting on Thomas to make sure that their Christmas was a happy one. The snow was falling much faster now and was starting to get deep in some places. Thomas had to go carefully so as to not get stuck. He kept telling himself, The children are counting on me and this will show Father Christmas what a really useful engine I am. Soon Thomas could see the lights of the hospital through the falling snow. As he pulled up, there were children at the windows cheering his arrival. While the doctors and nurses helped to unload the parcels, the fat controller came out of the hospital and walked right up to Thomas. Thomas, said the fat controller, I have a very important job for you. There is a little boy with a broken leg who lives in the last house before the tunnel to Balahu. It is snowing too hard for his mother to come get this toy train. I need you to take this up to his house. Of course, peeped Thomas. I am a really useful engine. But sir, my stocking wasn't hung before I left. Father Christmas will forget me. Nonsense, Thomas, said the fat controller. Father Christmas will be as proud of you as I am. So Thomas headed off again. By now, the wind was howling all around him, and there was so much snow blowing that it was very hard to see. Thomas, for once, wished he had a snow plow as he moved slowly up the track. Suddenly, the wind dropped and there was no more snow. He had missed the house altogether and had pulled into the tunnel. He stopped and started rolling slowly backward until he could see the lights of the house next to the tunnel. Peep, peep, peep! He whistled again and again, afraid he wouldn't be heard over the wind. At last, the boy's mother came hurrying from the house, tightly wrapped in a warm scarf. Thomas could see the boy in the doorway waving. Thank you, Thomas! He cried. You are my favourite engine! Then the boy and his mother went back inside and closed the door against the storm. Slowly, 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 Thomas made his way home. He worried that Father Christmas might not be able to find the engine shed in the storm. When he finally got back to the shed, it was very late at night. The Christmas tree was still lit, and all of the engine stockings, including Thomas's, hung in a row. Thomas was so tired, he was asleep in an instant. He dreamed that he had some presents in his stocking when the morning came. Good morning, Thomas. Merry Christmas, peeped Percy. Thomas woke with a start. He looked down. There was his stocking, and there was a note sticking out of it. Dear Thomas, thank you for being so kind and helpful. You are a really useful engine. The note wasn't signed, but Thomas thought he knew who it was from. Then he looked at his stocking. It was full to the top of the very thing he wanted most. Coal! Christmas in Wellsworth It was two days before Christmas. Everywhere Thomas looked, Wellsworth was bustling with preparations. Toby brought shoppers into town. James pulled trucks full of decorations. And Henry had just delivered a large Christmas tree to the town square. The following night, Wellsworth would have a wonderful Christmas Eve festival. Everyone would gather to watch the lighting of the tree. They'd sing carols and ring bells. Thomas couldn't wait. If only it would snow, he thought, then everything would be perfect. I'm afraid we won't have a white Christmas this year, Thomas peeped as he looked up at the blue sky. That's okay with me, said Henry. I have so much to do. I don't need a snowstorm now. Thomas loved the snow, even if he had to wear his heavy snow plough. Snow would make the Christmas Eve festival so pretty. 
Just then, the Fat Controller called to Thomas. I have a message from Lady Hat, he said. She wants to come to the festival, but my car is in the garage for maintenance. I need you to run over to Kelsthorpe to pick her up. Please take Annie and Clarabelle so you can bring my grandchildren as well. Yes, sir, peeped Thomas. Of all the jobs on Sodor, pulling a trainload of children was his favourite. Thomas was soon speeding across Sodor. Everywhere he looked, people were smiling and waving. In Marin, children prepared for a Christmas pageant with real sheep. And as night fell, the festive lights of Rolf's castle shined brightly. The town looked like a magic palace. Thomas arrived in Kelsthorpe. He had made good time and was eager to make the return trip the next day. When Thomas awoke the next morning, the weather had changed. It was cloudy and damp and getting colder by the hour. A chilly fog rolled over the town. Soon Lady Hat and the children arrived at the station. They climbed aboard Annie and Clarabelle dressed in their holiday best and carrying boxes of gifts. They couldn't wait to get to Wellsworth and the festival. The fog grew thicker. Thomas chugged away slowly. The cold wind blew, and the tracks were wet and slippery. Thomas's lamp was useless in the fog, and his driver held the throttle tight. They crept along more and more slowly. This isn't very merry weather at all, Thomas peeped. As he rolled past Rolf's castle, Thomas couldn't see the town through the thick fog. He wanted to get to Wellsworth as soon as possible. Thomas knew he had to be careful and go slowly. He hoped they would pass through this bad weather soon. But the bad weather didn't lift. As it grew later and later, darkness soon added to Thomas's problems. As he climbed toward Kildane, Thomas knew he wouldn't be in Wellsworth in time for the festival. He would miss the tree lighting. And worst of all, he was sure he had ruined Christmas for the Fat Controller and his family. Meanwhile, the people of Wellsworth gathered around the tree in the town square. They lit the festive lights and sang carols, but the Fat Controller was not with them. The Fat Controller waited nervously at the Wellsworth station. There were reports of fog and frost all over the countryside. He checked his watch and worried. I hope everyone is okay, he whispered to himself. Finally, as Thomas chugged over the hills outside Wellsworth, the fog lifted. He could see candles flickering in the windows of homes he passed. The streets of Wellsworth were empty, and even the sight of the great glowing Christmas tree at the centre of town didn't cheer Thomas. When they reached the station, the fat controller hugged his wife and helped carry the sleeping children off Annie and Clarabelle. And now we must get these children to bed, said Lady Hat or Santa Claus will never arrive. Thomas chugged back to the yard, feeling very low indeed. The next morning, the yard was blanketed with beautiful snow. All the engines wished each other happy Christmas. I'm sorry I missed the festival, Thomas peeped to James. And worst of all, I think I ruined the Fat Controller's holiday. Thomas didn't know that the Fat Controller was standing nearby. Ruined? said the Fat Controller. You brought my family to me safe and sound, and that's the best gift of all. Taking your time in that terrible weather was the right thing to do. Thomas, I'm glad you're such a really careful engine. Thomas was delighted. I am so grateful for my railway. The Fat Controller announced, I'm giving each of you a hopper full of the best coal to thank you for a wonderful year. All the engines tooted happily. And Thomas, as the request of my wife, Annie and Clarabelle will be getting new seat cushions. It's a wonderful Christmas after all, peeped Thomas, and the snow did make everything perfect. James said tomorrow would be perfect. Tomorrow? What's tomorrow? Thomas asked. James laughed. Have you forgotten Boxing Day, slow coach? Hooray! 
I had forgotten, Thomas peeped. More rights for children. Every year on the day after Christmas, all the engines on the Fat Controllers Railway roll out to the hospitals all over the island. Free rides and new toys and clothing are given to every child. Boxing Day was beautiful. Thomas, James and Henry were decorated and loaded with nice things for the children of Sodor. Then they chugged across the countryside. Everywhere the engines went, they were met with cheering. All the children loved their presents and taking rides around the towns to see the lights and decorations. Thomas couldn't have been happier. James, he called, what's nicer than a white Christmas? What? asked James. A white boxing day, laughed Thomas.